Okay, I will be introducing you. So our speaker for today is Professor J. Acho Amikashi. He graduated from the University of Ghana with a BA first class and S degree in economics and statistics in 1991. He received his PhD in economics from Simon Fraser University in Canada. He also has master's degree from Queen's University in Canada and a postgraduate diploma from the London School of Economics in the UK. He is a full professor of economics at the University of Guelph in Canada, where he has been since August 2002. He is a fellow of the Center for Democratic Development, CD in Ghana, the Center for Economic Studies and Info Institute for Economic Research in Munich, Germany, and the Chetpo Institute of Wilfred Laurie, Wilfred Laurie University in Canada. In, 2000 and, in 2021 and 2023, he was a Kenish African Diaspora Fellow at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana. He has held visiting positions and all taught at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana, the University of Ghana, the American, the African Economic Research Consortium in Kenya, the Ministry of Finance in Ghana, Oxford University in the UK, Simon Fraser University in Canada, the, Univers the University of Munich in Germany, Gimpa, KN University, among others. He has won several awards, including the 2006-2008 President's Distinguished Professor at the University of Guelph, 2008 Excellence in Re Re Refereeing Award, American Economic Review, the Gilbert po the Gilbert Ponsby Memorial Scholarship, London School of Economics, and Mobile Oil Ghana Scholarship. He is or has been on the editorial boards of the, the European Journal of Political Economy, Ghana Policy Journal, and the Journal of Behavioral and Experimental Economics, and is a reviewer for organizations like the United States Israel Binational Science Foundation, the Social Sciences and Humanity Research Council of Canada, and the Israel Science Foundation. His fields of specializations are public economics, development economics, and microeconomics. Prof. Amegashi, we are so pleased to have you here with us. <clears throat> and my fellow colleagues here are all ready to hear your, um, your presentation. So I'm going to leave the, the platform for Prof. as he gives us his presentation on the whole process. And then if we have questions, we can put them in, in the chat. I'm going to take notice of that. And then we can use the reaction button still to raise our hands if we have some questions going for it. Okay, so Prof. Yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you very much for the glowing introduction. I want to share my slide, what's happening here. Um, let me see. Um, Oh, five, okay, let me go. All right, so I want to share my, I gave you my, uh, this thing, huh? Yeah, I do have it. Could you, could you share it? Let me, let me, I, I want to, I'm looking for my. Oh, okay, you want me to send it back to you? No, 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 Can you share it on the screen or I'm going to files and. Share screen. Or maybe I have to, I have to go to, I'm saying, I'm not saying my USB drive. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm searching my Google. I'm still my Google Drive, but not my USB Drive. All right, I don't understand why. Let me see. This. Uh, or should I just save? I can save something Google Drive and just move it. Let me see. I can what? share my screen too if you want. Okay, but why? I should, but why is it I can't share my? Uh, I can't really see anything on my desktop. Okay, you know what? Because if you share, then I have to be, I have to rely on you to. Yeah, to continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let me, let me, let me, let me do something quickly. You guys, oh. just give me a, 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 two minutes. Um, uh, let me see. Can you rest your talk? Where is this thing? Uh, yeah, but I can, I, I can start talking. So, um, uh okay uh okay where is that okay talk and then um successful economist 
browse. Should I go to the desktop? Uh, okay, now let me try to share uh, my screen. Oh, what am I now? This thing is, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are screen sharing. Can you share? Uh, uh -huh. yes. Can you see? Oh. Yes, Prof, we can see. Um, you, can see the, you can see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So you can see it, it, it's working now. Yes, please. All right. So th sorry for the that uh, pistol. Uh, thanks to Hamida and uh, Dr. Farouk for inviting me one more time. I gave this presentation in November 2021. So I didn't know that one and a half years now. So the, the title of the presentation is Postgraduate Economics in Canada and Beyond. So for, me, for the most part, I'll focus on Canada, but I'll talk about the UK, US, and other places. So let's look at the ranking of English, you know, Canada is bilingual. We have a French and English as our official languages. So there are some universities in Canada, like the University of Montreal and Laval University in Quebec that uh, are French universities, they teach in French. Uh, so I'm gonna focus on only the ranking of English economics departments in Canada, because I presume most of you don't speak French. So there are rankings of schools so tier one, and this is, not, this is not in any order. Uh, we have Queens, Toronto, Western Ontario, Simon Fraser, McGill, UBC. Tier two, we have McMaster, York, Guelph, Alberta, Calgary, Concordia, Carlton. Tier three, Dalhousie University, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Waterloo, Victoria, Ottawa, Ryerson. Uh, well, well, okay. I, I'm putting some schools in tier three, but I can put them in tier four. They, they only have MA, they don't have. So these schools are Lethbridge, Rock, Regina, Winnipeg, New Brunswick, Memorial, Prince Edward Island, and Trent. Uh, so, um, how do you get into these schools, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll make a certain point about the trade-off between admission and financial support. So the first thing I'll tell you is that I get emails from people and stuff, but the one thing you can do is that use your networks. In other words, for example, go to a department that you want to apply to, check people. And the people you see, professors, administrative staff, you see uh, students, click on students and see whether you can identify any Ghanaian or African names and contact them because they are there and ask them, how did you get here? What are the funding opportunities? I mean, let, let me give you some information about the, where they are. And of course, you also know people who got admissions to universities abroad, like if, 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 uh, Hamida is now at Ohio University. Uh, wherever she did an undergrad, people know her. Some people can contact her. So I, I went to the Department of Economics at Texas Tech University. And actually, I hadn't heard about the university before because in Texas, the universities that are more popular are the University of Texas at Austin, which is probably the best university, Texas A&M. Uh, the University of Houston and so far. I've, I've not, I didn't I hadn't heard about Texas Tech University. But the way I got to know about this university was because I went to teach at KUST last year. Was it last year? No, I think I went to teach at KST in 2021. 
And so there was a guy doing an infill there called Eric Ayamga. So if you look at my screen, he's number two. He was doing an infill at KUST. I think he did his bachelor's too at KUST. And he, 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 his name is Eric Ayamga. So when I went there this year, I was told that he had left for Texas Tech University to do a PhD, which is Texas Tech University in the, U in the US. Now, if you look at their, so I went to their website, if you look at their teaching assistants who are PhD or master students, uh, they are a faculty of 11. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decent but small department. But if you look at their PhD or graduate students, there are at least three people that I can identify as Ghanaians. Some of them have Muslim names. They could be Nigerians or Ghanaians, I can tell. But Paul Emisa Odum, Eric Ayamga, and Richard Esioku, those that are described like they must be Ghanaians. Okay, Eric, I know is a Ghanaian, but Paul Emisa Odum, and so you can contact them and say, how did you get here? How easy was it to, to get here? What should I do? That kind of stuff. So that's one way. So you have to use your network. It's very, very important. You have to know about the school. Okay, for example, in, in the 1990s, there are some, in the 1990s, there were some Ghanaian students at Queen's University, 80s, 90s. And the reason the Ghanaian students, a lot of them were there was that somebody went there, did well. So when the person did well, it's the same with Frank. It's the same with Simon Fraser, where Dr. Farouk and I went to. So if they see that Ghanaian students come and they do well, then they, they admit more Ghanaian students, right? If, let's say, you come from university and you don't do well, there's a bad signal, then there's all oh, students from this university are not good, so we don't, we don't admit them. But still, it's good to contact people in your department. Okay, so what do admissions com committees look for? As you can imagine, they look for a high GPA. So it's better, so you, you, you better get first class or second class upper. And they are looking for good grades in microeconomics, macroeconomics, and, econom and econometrics. They are looking for strong training in mathematics or statistics. And so in some US schools, they have students with BSA in mathematics, physics, or engineering. So for example, if I'm on a committee and I come from Legon or uh, Cape Coast, I think KUSC doesn't have this combination. They don't have, and you did mathematics and economics or mathematics and statistics. I am more confident that you're going to, you can, you, you can handle uh, the program here in Canada or US. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that accommodations, you can't do it because there are people who have had that. I'll give you examples like the, the governor of the Bank of uh, Ghana, Dr. Addis. He didn't do economics or, uh, and statistics or economics and uh, mathematics. He didn't do that. He did, he, he did economics, the social science, other political science, geography, sociology, etc., or psychology. But he, he got a PhD from McGill, so you can do it. But if you have a, a, a bachelor's in economics and statistics or economics and mathematics, your chances are higher. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have that, you can't make for the shortfall. You should learn. You should learn how to do your, uh, you, should, you, should, you should invest more time in mathematics and statistics. It's very, it's very, very important. Okay. Uh, some of you may know the book by a guy called um, Kevin Wainwright. The, the book by Alpha Chiang. The fourth edition is by Kevin Wainwright and um, Chiang. It, Kevin Wainwright was a graduate student in SF Simon Fraser when I was there. I don't know whether he left before Dr. Farouk came, but uh, I think here yeah, he teaches there still. So Kevin Wainwright well, was very good in math econ. So that's why he wrote that book with, uh, with Chiang. When they wanted to write the fourth edition, Chiang was old and he didn't want to write the revised edition. So they asked Kevin Wainwright to, to write the uh, fourth edition. Okay, so that's the trade-off. It is harder to get into a top tier school than a lower tier school. Okay, so it is harder to get into, let's say, UBC than it is to get into, let's say, University of Waterloo. 
because UBC is ranked higher than University of Oakland. But it's, it's also easier to get adequate financial support from top schools. So there's a, the, uh, there's a, there's a, it's harder to get to top school, but it's easier to get money if they admit you. Okay. Now, so getting admission is easier. So sometimes people get admission, they get excited. They don't get excited yet. The reason getting admission is easier is that the schools are looking at risk. They're looking at the risk that you can come and do well in their program or survive in their program. So if they want to admit you and you have your own money, you can come. Right? But for them to give you money, the bar is higher because they are spending money on you. That is why when you hear that somebody went to Columbia, Ivy League, they went to Harvard and stuff, well, it makes a difference whether they paid the school fees themselves or they were given a scholarship or a teenship there, whether they were given financial support by Harvard. Right? So it's harder to get financial support than it is to get admission. So when you get admission, you should check whether the financial support is adequate, et cetera, right? And you should check about the cost of living, like maybe in Ontario, that's Ontario, is, Canada has 10 provinces. Ontario is one province. Simon Fraser is in the province of British Columbia. Now, in Ontario, if you're if you a foreign student, you pay more than a local student. That's, it's the same in Ghana too. So we, the money for a foreign student, I think you can pay about 20, uh, 20 at least 20,000 in school fees alone, right? So, and then you have to talk about accommodation and food and all that stuff. Okay, that's what, this is what I was saying. Now, in a province, in a province like Ontario, Foreign students pay at least 12,000 more in tuition and school fees than Canadians or permanent residents in Canada. Yeah, they are domestic students. So it's cheaper for investors to support a domestic student than a foreign student. So if I can give, if I can give uh, $15,000 to support a domestic student, you can see that it would be more difficult for us to give more money to a foreign student. So we have to, so the school has to think that you are way better than a domestic student for them to be giving you that funding. So that's why they look at people who are first class or very good second class actors because they can get people from here. And that's why it is difficult to get the top schools because the top schools, the very top Canadian students apply to those schools, right? And it's cheaper to fund them, okay? So that's, that's so you have to, you have to kind of uh, try some top schools and some middle range schools, right? Uh, yeah. So why would the university support foreign students? Okay, so there are comp is a, there's a competition for students. The best domestic students go to the top tier Canadian universities, or they go to the US. Lower tier uh, students, that is, the, the student who didn't do really well, the Canadian student who didn't do well, may prefer foreign, oh no, lower tier universities may prefer foreign students who are better than domestic students, right? So there are some so there are some foreign students who come here and they are better than domestic students. Like there, there was a time when I wanted to admit a Ghanaian student who didn't come to us. I'll, I'll tell you more about that, that student. Okay. So internationalization, they also want to have exposure. <clears throat> so they try to admit some foreign students because they want people outside Canada or people outside US, people in Africa and Asia to, to know about their program, right? So they call it internationalization. Okay, so let's go to the UK. The five top economics departments in the UK are the London School of Economics, Oxford University, Warwick University, University College London, and the University of Cambridge. University of Manchester, Birmingham, not, uh, Southampton, Nottingham, etc. They're also good universities, right? So and usually, I mean, London School of Economics tend to be number one. So Oxford and Cambridge are number one and two universities overall in the UK. But when it comes to economics, London School of Economics is, 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 is the top university in, in, in the UK. And so London School of Economics and University College London, they are all under the University of London. So these are the top five economics departments in the UK. Uh, okay, so let me give you some Ghanaians who got their PhDs from Canadian universities. So if you go to Queens, you have John Kakari, who got his PhD in 1985. Victoria Kwakwa, she got her PhD in 1988. She did economics and statistics. Granville Anson, 1980, 
1988, he actually only had a degree in mathematics. Daniel Kanda, who was, who and I, he and I did TA ship at uh, Legon in 1991. He got his PhD in 1998, he's at the IMF. Edward Kuchuati, who's my good friend. We all at Queens together. He's a professor at Tash University. He also got his PhD in 1998. Now Simon Fraser, I think the first person to get his PhD there was a guy called Daniel Simmons. And then Joe Atam Mensa, and then our vice president, Mohamed Baumia. Then Sam Lai, Alex Apia, myself, uh, Professor Ampofu, who's at KUST, and Farouk, of course, Dr. Dr. Farouk, of course. And then I think there are, Farouk, are there any more PhDs in the SFE program? Yes, please. Uh, we do have two currently. <laughs> oh, Beswa, Beswa and who? Beswa and Richmond. There's okay, Richmond. I don't know. I know Beswa. Okay. And then we have PhD from Alberta, Joama Kuntufuo. So people like uh, Daniel, uh, uh, Daniel Simmons, uh, Sam Lai, Eugenia Ampofu, they didn't do economic statistics or economic mathematics, but they were able to do the PhD. So just if you work hard, um, Joama Kuntufuo didn't do a PhD, he's, uh, he's currently at the office of the vice president. Eben as Assem, he did economics and statistics. So one, one interesting thing about Assem is that Assem has two PhDs. He has a PhD in finance and a PhD in economics. So he's an investor of Ledbury Business School. McGill, we have uh, Godfrey Potufe Adama, uh, uh, who was used to be a Bank of Ghana. He got his PhD in 1965, that's long ago. Uh, Henry Wampa, he's also governor of the Bank of Ghana. And as you do have this governor of the Bank of Ghana. So we have, so we have three PhDs from McGill, who are governors of the Bank of Ghana. And then and Laurie Ann Agama, who is at Dr. Agama's daughter. And then Alex Wilson Dark, who is at Ledbridge. Toronto, we have only two PhDs from there. And uh, one power also didn't do economics or mathematics or statistics or mathematics. Alex Wilson Dark, who also didn't do a statistics of mathematics. He was a year behind me. Now, if you go to McMaster, you have Nick Bakusowa, Yawasanti. Yawasanti is a, professor, a lecturer at um, Legon. Nick Bakusowa taught me at Legon, but he's left there. John Soforata, he got his PhD for University of Ottawa in 1965. That is Ken Oforata's father. Uh, okay, and then we have Manitoba, Jojaite, Akwena, and all these people. So, so there are people, <laughs> there are uh, people who have got their PhDs from um, all these places and, not, and all of them didn't do economics, statistics or mathematics. So if you did something else, you can still make it. If you did economics, political science, it's still possible. Okay, now, if you have an MPhil or an MA, should you apply straight into the PhD program? And the answer is no, bad idea. If you admit that straight from MA or MPhil into PhD here, you will not, <laughs> Let me talk, let me say PG, you know, go see top. You just, uh, you just get crazy. So as I speak now, there's a guy in our program who has a PhD in economics from Nigeria, who has failed a qualifying exam. And uh, the next exam is in, on, on July 28th. If he fails again, he'll be kicked out. But he already has a PhD from Nigeria. He's, he's even have a publication in, in a journal. By he, he, he failed, right? So, so even there, are, and it's all about it's all about Ghana. There are people who went to top universities who still came here and did their masters because when you do your masters here, you get used to the Canadian system. Number one, I'll, I'll give another reason. So Edward Kutwati, he had his MPhil from Cambridge in economics, but he came to do an MA at Queens. Daniel Kanda had an MSc in economics from Warwick in the UK. He came to do an MA at Queens before he did a PhD. If it is Assem, same thing. MSc, uh, Warwick. Uh, I wrote MA Queens, but I'm not sure. I think he just came to do an MA, I think in Alberta. This guy was my mate at Simon Fraser. He's called Vasil Golovetsky. He did an MA in Ukraine and came to the uh, uh, SFU to do an MA again before he got into the PhD program, okay? So you, if you've got straight the PhD, actually you won't be admitted. So you're just wasting your time applying straight to the PhD. Okay, there are some exceptions. 
The assumptions are investor Manitoba admitted one Francis Zipi, who had a PhD, an MPhil from Ghana, <coughs> straight into its PhD program. Dr. Cecilia Puena also came straight from Ghana into a PhD. Dr. Kwadja Boati also came straight uh, from Ghana into a PhD in, at the House University. They were lecturers at the University of Ghana in the 1980s. But note that they, did not, they weren't doing financial support by the universities. They came with external financial support, ARC support of Commonwealth scholarships. Right? I can't imagine a school in Canada here admitting somebody straight from Ghana with, into their PhD program and giving them money. It's, it's, it's to be rare. So here they were admitted, but even in that case, they, that they had their own funding. Okay. <laughs> if you have an MFU, uh, an annual MFU, like I said, the second MA in Canada is better because PhD qualifying is under the high failure rate. So at Guelph, in 24, 2010, we, four students were kicked out. I mean, they are, they are not Ghanaians or Africans. They are non-Ghanians, non non-Africans there. In 2013, five students were kicked out out of 30 students. In 2021, five out of six students filled their first microeconomic qualifying exam. Okay, so the failure rate is high. And I think when I was at Simon Fraser, I don't know whether things have changed, but it was just kind of the same, right? When, 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 when I was on Simon Fraser in 1999, when I wrote Microeconomics Comp, we were six and two people, only two people passed the first time. Okay. In 2018, a Ghanaian student with bachelor's from Legon and M in economics from Sweden withdrew from our PhD program because she failed the comprehensive exam. That's, there's an exam you have to write before you can start writing your thesis. In 2018 and 19, a Ghanaian student, MA in economics from University of South Korea, and a Nigerian student, MA in economics from the University of Birmingham, UK, were kicked out of the program. In 2021, two Ghanaians were kicked out, out of the program. They had, they had, they had first class from in, 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 um, in, uh, from investing in Ghana, from KUSD. So this continues. So, it's, so, so, so if you have an MCL, it's not a good idea to find a PhD, come apply for the MA again. Of course, you have a bachelor's, you should apply for the MA. Um, <coughs> In the US, you can go from bachelor straight to the PhD, but, and I, but I'll explain that. Okay, how prepared should you be? So these are the, some testimonies. Those are somebody who did an MA in Manitoba and went to the PhD. So the PhD program at University of Alberta is tough. I literally have no breathing space and I've contemplated quitting on several locations, but I am still <laughs> giving it my best. I completed K University in two, two, with first class honors. Now this guy has withdrawn. After, after he sent me this a year later, I contacted him and said, no, I've quit. I, I, so he's working in Canada somewhere, right? So he's withdrawn from the PhD. This guy, there's somebody who had the first class from Legon, an MA in the UK and an MA in Manitoba. So she went straight, she, went, uh, she, she, she went, I advised her to go into the masters again and she applied to the masters. And she wrote me this text saying that it was so tough. He said, Prof, thank you so much for advising me during my application procedure. I'm now in Manitoba. We jump straight into math review and writing test after test. You are definitely right about doing an MA first because the courses move really fast. It is definitely quite different from the MS in the UK. And I would have had a hard time even if I made the cast straight in the PhD. So <laughs> after she sent this, she did a master's and she wanted to going to the PhD, they told her grades were, she passed, but they told her grades were not good enough, so she didn't get in the PhD at Manitoba. Uh, so that's also, so, 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 so this is what she told me in 2013. Manitoba has definitely said no to PhD. According to the grad chair, they are good only if the person has straight A's in the theory courses. So she didn't make it, although she, she got the first class. There's another person who got the first class, and she did his MA at Brock University. Brock University is about one and a half hours from me. <clears throat> On my experience, it's been a lot. First was the environment, resources, class, blah, blah, blah. Then he says, our preparation in Legon is inadequate. My only slight advantage came 
as I pursue economic with two year background in mathematics. So Legon trains you well, right? Legon training is, is, is decent, but the technical training is not high enough, right? So you have to kind of teach yourself and augment it, right? So, so the math econ that we do at Legon is, is good, but it's not strong, it's not very strong, okay? So I, I can tell you that when I, I came here, the statistics I did in the statistics department helped me a lot. And then of course I did the, the equivalent of elective maths, which, is, which in our time was A-level maths and that also helped. So Legon gives you enough training, but you also have to augment it. You have to, so, 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 so teach yourself more maths, read more maths stuff, math books, teach yourself more maths, it's very important. Uh, so like I said, but, Africans and Africans who got their PhDs from Guelph and other Canadian universities without doing masters, without doing economics and statistics or economics and math. Okay, now, uh, I think I'll skip this. Uh, this was the graduate chair in economics at Guelph asking me whether a Ghanaian student was good enough to come into our program. He had done the bachelor's at post and he went to Ames, Africa Institute for Mathematical Sciences. Okay, <laughs> so I said, his math will be strong, certainly stronger than the math of average PhD students in, in our program because he, he, he went to Ames and then he went to a school called Bowling Green in the US. So I checked their course outline to see whether it was equivalent to ours. So these are some of the things we look for. Now, <clears throat> there's a lady, who was at the Central Bank of Nigeria. She has a BA in economics in 2001 from Covenant University in Nigeria. I hear that's a, very, that's a good university in Nigeria. And an MSc in economics and international economics from Work University, which is one of the top five universities in the UK. But she applied to us and we didn't take her. And this was what the graduate chair sent to me in April 20th of March. She said, sorry for taking so long to reply because I checked, I asked, I contacted and said, what are you doing with this application? He said, sorry for taking so long to reply. I'm not sure about this one. You and I understand the UK marketing system, but not everyone on the committee does. The biggest issue is the fall 2022 is nine years after she finished at Warwick. That means she means she's been out for so long, right? So, so if, you, if, if it's been like a long time since you got your degrees, you're likely to get in like 10 years, but this girl had been out for nine years. But also the main reason, the main reason as I see it was because uh, uh, you know, you, she had grace when, when the sixties, and I was telling him that well in the UK that's high, but a garage chair wouldn't uh, agree. Okay, now <clears throat> there is a program called MSc in Quantitative Economics, which is which is at uh, Alicante University in Spain. They recruit people from KUS, so you get the master's program if you do well enough. They, they put into the PhD pro, into their PhD program. Okay, so there was this guy. He had an MPhil in economics from KUST. He had he had all A's in eight courses in KUST. But when he went to Alicante, he couldn't get into the PhD program. He didn't do well enough to get into the PhD program. He had to he had to leave after the masters. Now he, his math background was not strong. He did economics, got a first class. But, and got all A's, eight A's in all the courses took at, at the MPhil level, at the master's level, but still couldn't get it. Now look at these people. Now, let me give you, an, let, let me give you, I want to make a point. These people also went in the same program, did the master's at Alicante, and they're all now doing the PhD. Now, what differentiates them is because their math is good. So that other guy who didn't get in the PhD, he did MPhil at King University. These guys did MSc at KUST. The MSc economics at KUST is below the MPhil at KUST. So they did a lower level of masters, but they got in the PhD program. Why? Because Abraham Lamplady has a bachelor's in agricultural science. So he has done physics, maths, and stuff. So his math background is, is, is strong. Esther Aqua has a bachelor's in mathematics. Um, uh, John Edry, he, he, he just has a BA in economics, so he was able to do it. So, so there are exceptions. Uh, Hadi Ahmed, 
He also did all economics. He didn't do economics or mathematics. But he told, he told me that he got A1 elective maths in, in, in SSS. So it tells me that the, if, so I make the point, if you have good math skills, you can survive, right? So math is very important. We don't, uh, in North America, we don't, we don't come and be writing profile, big English essays. Uh, uh, what are the factors that is, what are the Keynes' theory of uh, what consumption and our land advantage? Advantage. Who asks you that kind of question? We'll give you a model and we'll ask you to solve the model. So, so you better know how to solve the model. Okay. Um, now, the point of mathematics, let me tell the model of mathematics again. There's a guy at Oxford called Paul Camper. Paul Camper has a first class in engineering from Cambridge before he went to do a PhD in economics. Avinash Dixit, who was at Princeton, has a first class in mathematics and physics from the University of Bombay. He has a first class in mathematics from Cambridge University before he went to MIT to do a PhD. Marcos Mobius has a first class in mathematics from Oxford University, and then went to Enfield, Northfield University College in Oxford to do a PhD, a master's, and then PhD in economics. Eliana Kuziampo has a first class in mathematics from Oxford, and then PhD from Harvard in economics. Akim Wambach, who's at the University of Cologne, he has a PhD in physics from the University of Oxford. And he has a PhD in economics. So these are the people, you see these are the people in economics now and they push the frontier. These are the people who will be teaching you. They are very good in math and they expect to be very good in math and statistics. So you, you, you have to come with your A game. They're not gonna ask you like this Nigerian lecturer who failed the exam here. I went through the mistakes he did. And you'll be writing a lot of English, writing a lot of grammar, writing a lot. No, we're asking you, you have to be, your, your argument has to be tight. Your logic has to be tight. And you have to be quantitative in your approach. But you have to have intuition too. You have to have good intuition. Okay, I'm going to skip this. Now, should you go to the USA? Should you go to the USA? So <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you first thing is that a master's from the USA in economics is below a master's in economics in the UK, Canada, Europe, Australia. Okay, that's one you have to do. So the USA traditionally did not have a master's in economics. So the USA, you go from bachelor straight to PhD. That is why Nobel laureates like Paul Krugman, uh, Paul Samuelson, and those, all those guys, they were able to finish their PhDs at the age of 24. At the age of 24, they finished their PhD. You go straight to the PhD. When you, so there are some people who have a, a master's from the UK, uh, from the US, those people, some of, some of them, not all of them, is because they went to the PhD, they failed their qualifying exam, and they were giving the master's as a consolation degree. For example, if you go to your economics department, they say the master of philosophy degree is awarded to students in the PhD program upon completion of all the requirements for advancement to candidacy for a doctorate in economics, okay? So they give you the master's after you've passed your qualifying exam, or what is called a comprehensive exam in Canada, okay? The exam that if you fail twice, you are kicked out. So you, you, you do the, but you're already in a PhD program. You are not admitting the master's. Okay, look at this guy, Yao Nyaku. Yao Nyaku is a Ghanaian professor at New York University. If you look at his, <coughs> CV, he did economics and mathematics at the University of Ghana in 1982. And then got his MA from Cornell University in 1985. And then got his PhD in 1986. So between his MA and PhD in economics, there was there was just a year apart, 1985 to 1986. Did he take one year to do his PhD? No, he didn't take one year to do his PhD. He took four years to do his PhD. He got his bachelor's in 1982 and went to Cornell and got his PhD in 1986. What happened was that whilst he was in the Cornell PhD program, he was given an MA after he passed his qualifying exam. 
right? So he didn't do a PhD in one year. There's a guy also called Augustine Dente. He got a BA in economics and statistics, got first class, University of Ghana, 2010. Then M in economics, University of Akron, 2012. And then PhD, University of Georgia, 2018. So, <clears throat> so MA in economics, University of Akron. The Akron masters, uh, students have contacted me and I, and I asked them, send me your course outline, send me your questions. And when they send me, they are undergraduate type level. Uh, uh, the level is a little, like fourth year undergrad here. So, but, so if you're already in the US, you're doing a master's, you can apply to do a PhD in the US because after in the US, you can even go to a PhD with your bachelor's. But don't use your MA in economics to go to come and do a PhD in Canada. Okay, so uh, so schools that offer terminal M in the US, there are some schools that offer terminal M, right? They don't, it, 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 you just go into the PhD program, but the PhD program, you just go into the master's program, but the master's program is no equivalent to an MA in Canada or UK. So some of these schools are South Dakota, Central Michigan, University of Akron, Ohio, Ohio University, Florida State University. <clears throat> so I went to give a talk at Florida State University some years ago, and they have two streams. They have a, a PhD program, and they have a master's program. The master's program is for people who want to go into industry. So you, you, go, you get it and you go into industry. It is not to train you to go into the PhD. And they have a PhD program where they admit that people directly. So the two Ghanaian students from KUSD <laughs> who came here about three years ago, straight from the, into the PhD and failed a uh, qualifying exam. Okay, so they had first class in economics from Ghana. Then they went to South Dakota and Ohio University. So I've, I've told you those master's programs, they don't, they don't have the same, if they are good master's program, they don't have the same technical rigor like a, a standard master's program in Canada or UK. So, but, so they were admitted straight into the PhD program here. If the graduate chair had contacted me, I would have told them, told, told him not to admit them to the PhD program. They should be admitted to the MA program. But they came straight into the PhD program and they struggled. So I asked them, why did you struggle? What, what, what happened? And you can, well, I can tell. Their math was not strong. One of them, two, both of them told me, hey, Prof, we have not dealt with probability density function. We don't know how to manipulate a probability density function. Right? So they, they didn't have this, this tool. So eventually, we, we, they just ended up with a master's here. They got a master's from Guelph. Right? So if you're in the US and you do some of these universities where you're doing a master's, if you want to a PhD, you can apply to a school in the, U, in the US. But if you apply to come to Canada, you have to come to do a master's again because your master's does have the same level of technical difficulty like an MA in economics. So some of the textbooks they use, like some, some of the schools use a book by Nichols, Walter Nichols. That book is an undergraduate book, but they use it in their master's book. That's what I use in my third year undergraduate degree. It's called well, Nichols what Principles and Extensions, but Nichols and Snyder. Okay, so that make that okay. Uh, some recent PhDs and current students in Canada. I am going to. Aha, these are the students I was talking about. The students who dropped out. So one went to Central Michigan University, and the other other went to High University. So there was the PhD program from 2020 to 2021, and they had to drop out because they put it. But they got they all got first class. One did economics and geography. I don't know what the other one did, but they, they all didn't. Their math was not strong. They dropped out because their math was not strong. Number one, and the Central Central American University and Ohio University didn't prepare them for 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 a PhD because the technical rigor was not there. So you have, if you're getting a master's from there, it is good. You can use it, you can use use it to go and apply for a master's in the US, but don't if you're coming here, you have to apply for a master's again. Uh, Okay, let me just tell you how some students are doing. So, uh, Dr. Farouk finished SFU. So I'm talking about recent, current, and PhD, recent uh, students 
Dr. Fire Fish, SFU, and now he's at Clemson of Amazon. Then he's at Safra Finish PhD at the University of Calgary. He's at Niagara University. Henrietta Ajay Isiyama finished uh, economics in, uh, uh, in, uh, at Guelph. She's a PhD, at, she's an economist at Statistics Canada, that Department of Statistics. Let me tell you something that's a German state. And all, the schools too are different. So, so the standard, they, they all meet the minimum standard. But right? you go to some place, you see that it can be challenging than others, right? So Henrietta, for example, she was a star at the University of Manitoba. She got all A's. When she came to the PhD program here, micro one, she had to do micro one with our MA students. And she said that the MA here was tougher. Okay, so different schools have different standards. So you can go, you can go to maybe you go to Samuel Fraser and it's, it's even higher than Guelph. At the, the minimum standard is there, but there are differences. So sometimes you cut your foot at the side. But if, it, if that is good to apply to as many schools as possible and aim high. Okay, and some and, and the way it works in Canada is that there's a packet order. So if you finish your PhD, you're not going to be hired by a university that is ranked higher than the university. Okay, so University of Guelph is ranked higher than University of uh, Manitoba. So we have three of our PhDs teaching at the University of Manitoba. And, and this Herita was taught microeconomics by one of our students. Simon Fraser is ranked higher than the University of Guelph. So that's how I got here, right? So Guelph would not likely hire someone from Manitoba, okay? But, so there are different rankings. That's just as uh, 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 Harvard or U of T to be not hire somebody from, from Guelph. So there are rankings So, but, they are all good schools, but in between them, they are rankings. Just as in Ghana, somebody will say, uh, Legon is better than Cape Coast or, or vice versa, or Legon is better than UDS. It's the same thing. Uh, Prosper Koto, it is PhD at University of Manitoba and I an health economist at Nova Scotia Health Authority. Okay, this is my final slide. So how, do you, how what does it require to be a successful economist? Well, you have to be curious. You don't have to do, don't be doing chew and pull and saying that, uh, uh, okay, the book said this. I remember when we at Queens was a guy who came to do a master's in mining engineering and was asked to critique a book. And he was so nervous. He came to me and said, hey, how can I critique a book by a, written by a professor? Book no lie. And I told him, that, look, here it's not like that. You have to be, you have to critique the book. So he got a confidence and he did it. So ask questions, ask why, be curious. Now you have to form the habit of writing. When you write, people get to hear of you. Exposure. But don't, don't be in a hurry to write just anything. You have to do that. Your work is quality. You have to put in effort in what you do. So let me give you an example. Professor Ernest Ayit, he's one of the top economists in Ghana. But he only has a bachelor's in economics. He doesn't have a master's in economics or a PhD in economics. Professor, he was the former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana and director of ESE. His MA is in regional planning from Kenya West. And his PhD is in planning from Dortmund, Germany. But he has, he has made his name before he writes. Professor Ayite writes a lot, okay? So that is what you have to do. You have to then how to write. And uh, that's one thing. Some, sometimes some Ghanaian students come here and they can't, they can't write. If it, they, whether to write an essay or, or work on their thesis, they struggle. So form the habit of writing, read a lot. And don't stop learning. Have a curious mind. Attend seminars and read more. And as I've em emphasized, learn as much mathematics and statistics as possible. It's very, very important. If you know your maths, you know your statistics, but it is not that just know the maths mechanic. Okay, so if you, if you bring somebody who has a PhD in physics into economics, and they, they don't have economic intuition, don't have economic understanding, they don't, they don't be good economists, right? So you have to blend all that. So I think that's the end of my talk. Uh, I hope you, find, you found it useful. Um, I can take some questions.
All right, thank you so much, Professor Mekashi. Um, please, we'll be taking some questions. And if you have questions, you can just raise your hands and then I'll give you the platform to ask your questions. Prof, I also have some questions here. I think people okay. sent them earlier on. I can read them to you. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Okay, someone is asking, Paul, do I need to have a supervisor before applying for MSc Agribusiness and Agricultural Economics? Okay, don't. I'm in I'm an economics, I'm not in agribusiness. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure, but let me say this. You see, the form that you fill is a university-wide form, okay? So, okay. so that form, is for somebody applying in physics, chemistry, biology, economics, sociology, okay? Now, the pure sciences, economic, uh, physics, chemistry and stuff, the way they are funding is that a, a professor has a lab and a research grant, and he has to fund you. So you, you kind of have to match with the professor usually before you go in, because you have to have, you have, to, you have, to have their similar interests so that they can fund, fund you. So that, so that thing about a professor usually works for the sciences. But in economics, and probably in, 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 in agricultural economics too, I think in agricultural economics too, you don't have to have a supervisor. You don't do that. All that you have to do is you have to come, you come with good grades, you pass your exams, and then when you're, writing to, when you're ready to write your thesis, you look for a supervisor. So that's what I did. That's what I'm sure Dr. Farouk did. That's all, what we all did. You don't have to have a supervisor because in economics, you are not supervised by, you are not funded by, elect, by a professor. There's no, there's not like a lab that you work in a research lab. So we have a pot of money. We have a pot of money that we give to the students that we want to fund. And it's not, and it's not from any professor's research budget. Sometimes some professors are encouraged to do that, but you don't, you don't know. But they ask for the science people, their major funding is the research grants from their professors. So that's why you have to be marked with the supervisor. So that, so that, that form, when they say the supervisor, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a university wide form. So it's, it's intended for the pure science students, not for economics like this. No, we don't, we don't do that. All right, thank you so much, Paul. I think there is a hand here. Prince Fiajibe, can you please talk? Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Everyone, my name is Prince Fiajibe, and I'm speaking from Accra, Ghana. I must say that um, this has been exciting and um, interesting. I personally enjoy how Prof. Amakashi went about the entire presentation. Um, so at a point, I felt okay, so probably maybe it was only with regards to people who are interested in going to study economics. I have an agriculture background. And as of now, I have my list of Canadian investors that um, that masters I would want to go and study. I, I have that list of schools. And almost all the schools require that you first secure a supervisor before. Now, um, Prof. Megashi, I think you also attended KNUST. I have, I have, I have quite um, some concerns, especially with regards to those of us who attended KNUST. The first has got to do with the fact that um, getting recommendation letters from our lecturers from KNUST. I left school in 2015. There was a point on Twitter I ranted tagging the KNUST and as well as the voice of KNUST on there. They asked my, the college I, I graduated from and then the department and all of that. It's gotten to the point where you actually have to pay for recommendation letters. I know that it is not the same in other places like the US and then Canada. The professors and then your lecturers are even excited when you come around to ask them for recommendation letters. Is, it, um, is there a way, maybe now you, you, you have a voice 
and then from where you stand is there a way you could actually speak to the authorities at KNUST so that all across the colleges all across the departments getting documents as 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 um, getting documents especially for those who are interested in graduate school becomes very very easy because having to pay let's say maybe if i'm applying to about 10 schools and then i'm supposed to do three recommendation letters for all 10 schools and then the same recommendation um the same lecturer would not want to give you a recommendation letter for more than two schools then it becomes a bit of a challenge and so this is um, a plea i am making to you a passionate plea and um, in all humility if you can speak to our big people at KNUSD. now so i left school in 2015 but i've uh, so that was about eight years ago but then i've been in the agri space for uh about six years and then so for the two years i was doing something not related to agriculture but then it's basically statistics do I still stand a chance to uh, make it to graduate school? I graduated with a second class upper from KNUST because I think in one of the slides, um, you mentioned the fact that sometimes when you leave school for a long time, it's a bit hard. Am I, am I, am I right to think that you all do? I still feel no, I can, I can make it. W what do you think? Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay, so I'll answer your first, your, your second question, go the first. Um, uh, that lady were concerned about having left school for a long time because she was trying to get into the PhD program. The PhD program is tougher. It will take you at least four years to finish, so you, you have a higher bar. But if you're going from bachelor's to master's, it's a little bit, it's easier, okay? So, so yeah, so you, you still have a good chance. Um, so, 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 is your background in agriculture economics or is it in agriculture science? Oh, it's in agriculture science, and I specialize in horticulture. So, uh, okay, McGill okay, okay. is one of the universities on my list. There's University of Manitoba, University of South Korean, University of Gulf. I have Dalhousie University. Actually, Dalhousie University. In my uh, when I went through the department, the, the the faculty website, I saw two Ghanaians on there two Ghanaians, uh, members of the faculty in that college um, for the program that I am interested in. But then for Dalusi, my issue had got to do with um, the cost of tuition over there. And so it's looking okay. like I might not apply to Dalusi. Okay, yeah. okay. So um, yeah, that, 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 that Ghanaians at uh, Dalhousie. Um, now on your first question, yeah, it, it, it's, I didn't know that, I didn't go to KUST, I went to Legon. But um, I have friends at KUST. That's why I've been going there to teach. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that you have to pay for reference letters, especially these days, it's easy. You know? the, 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 the lecturer has to go online to fill a form. But uh, yeah, so I can I can raise this issue with some people. I know a former dean at KUST. I can raise this issue with some people, um, and they can do something. But what I what I do, for example, sometimes they get tired because they feel there are too many students. But it's a job they have to do. Now, what I do is that, and sometimes I don't know you. So what I do is that if I don't know a student, I ask you, send me your transcript, unofficial transcript. And when I see your transcript. I see how well you did in my course or how well you didn't do. I have a standard letter I write for students that I think are top students, students, students that I think are in the middle. I have a standard, I have a standard letter that I write for those for, for each student. So, and if I know when you graduated, I can go and check your, your marks or, or from the transcript, I can see your mark. Yeah, so it's something that they have to do. It's part of their job. Uh, so who do you pay that money to? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Fiat Bajji. Fiat Bajji gives it. Fiat Bajji gives it. Who do you pay the money to? Yes, so you pay to the department. You pay to the department. So there is um, a receptionist at the department who 
they would actually pay and then they will send you. So they would actually send you a link and then you would enter your details the year you graduated from and all of that. Then you effect the payment. So um, I'm here in Accra. Last year, I boarded a car from Accra back to campus. And then I went to have a discussion with regards to this recommendation letter. That was when I got to find out that now I would have to actually pay. So my project okay. supervisor was actually angry about the whole thing. He said he didn't understand why students had to pay. And so whenever I was interested in a recommendation letter, I could actually just get into right. right. that point okay. for me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'll talk whoever I, I, I come. But I don't have like I can't force people. But I'll talk to whoever I can. So I will continue the next question. All right, Prof. Thank you. I think um, the issue with paying for recommendation it's it's common in every school. I think in UCC too, we have to pay. It's not for your professor to write about you. It's for the sheets and the signature and some other things they put on the letter. It has to be on the letterhead. So I think it's common among all schools. I thought I thought it was online. Most of the schools now these days the recommendation is online. Um, yeah, so they give you a hard copy, Prof. I think they, they put the letter on a hard copy so you scan and send it to them, but you will have a hard copy in case you would need it. But I don't know for the KNUST. I think that's yeah, how well, it's I'm, going I'm saying it. that the investors here, like investors in Canada, they don't they don't accept hard copies anymore. If everything is done online. Hello, okay. Hello Prof. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so okay, um, we, can, we, can, we are going to other questions. Yeah, Abdul Rashid Adam, your hands are up. Um, can you please talk? Good afternoon or good morning, Prof. Yeah. Uh, we really do appreciate for this insightful presentation. Uh, we are now beginning to have different feel of this journey, and I must appreciate your effort for this. So, Prof, Thank please. My question is has to do with the issue of uh, rankings of the universities. Mm -hmm. Do people say don't venture into or don't venture so much into higher ranked universities? You can concentrate mm -hmm. universities. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would like you to clarify this for me, uh, giving us a, a clear path or guide on how we could actually search authentic sources of this rank because we are not in the context. I mean, being in North America, if you have been in North America, you are easy for you to identify the lower rank universities as compared to someone who is not the end. Well, uh, okay, okay. So, the rankings are, uh, uh, have you finished? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, the rankings are there. Um, you can look at the trends. For example, Simon Fraser and Queens. So the, the, the top, the tier one, they're unlikely to admit somebody with a second class up. So first class helps. And sometimes when they don't want to admit somebody second class is because the pool is such that the, the applicants, they have, they have a lot of people who are first class applying to them. So if, one, you, if you are coming with second class upper, you are at a disadvantage. Okay. Uh -huh. it's, not that, it's, not that, it's not that you can't get to the second. I think so. Some years ago, like 1990s and stuff, there's a few. They had people who had second class up, uh, I'm sure Queens too. But uh, these days, they go for people with first class more often. Right? And so maybe if you have second up, you can try tier two schools that I've, I've given. Okay, uh, Prof. Please, for, for more clarity, my focus is on you giving us, let's say, authentic source where we could actually get the rank, authentic rankings of this university. So well, that I, don't know, know. I don't know what okay. but if you, you have to Google, Google, if you Google ranking, rankings of Canadian, Canadian economic departments, you will see. Okay. So there's a ranking by repeg. So yeah. If you Google uh, the US, for example, the top 30, the top 30 is clearly known in the US. Thank you, right, so, yeah, and uh, yeah, so 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 that's that's it. But unfortunately, you have to be paying application fees, but you have okay. to um, you have to um, uh, you have to still apply to as many as mm -hmm. possible. 
Okay. For, for example, let me tell you my experience. When I when I finished Legon 1991, okay. Now I'm not making this point to brag. I'm making this point to show how difficult it is. Okay, so I got the first class, but the first year I applied, I got into Queens with partial funding. I couldn't go. I got into Queens with partial funding. I got to McMaster University with no funding. I applied to University of California, Berkeley. I didn't get into at all. I think I also didn't get into University of Rochester in the US. So after I finished my TA ship in Ghana, I went to G Ghana International School to teach for a year in 1991, 1992, and I started applying again. Again, I got into Queens and they got in partial funding. So what happened was that, at that in both cases, Queens gave me enough funding for a Canadian student. If I was a Canadian, the money they gave me was enough. But because foreign students pay more, they needed to give me something called international student fee waiver. So whilst I was applying in 1992 to go to Queens, hoping that I'll get international student fee waiver, then London School of Economics came with full support, financial support. So I stopped at Queens, I deferred Queens for a year, and I went to London School of Economics. And then they said, well, if you go to London School of Economics and you do well, we will we, we, do hard, we work, we will try to get you the international student, international student fee waiver, which will allow you to pay local fees. So in 1993, 1994, I got that and I came to Canada. So you just have to keep applying, right? So even, even so, although again, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that to brag, although I got a first class, I'm saying that to make a point that although I got a, I got a first class, it wasn't easy for me to go to get financial support. All right, thank you, Prof. Um, right. We'll take the next question from Aisha Amin. Aisha to Amin. Aisha to Amin, you can please talk. Okay, please. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, for the insights. Okay, so uh, I want to actually give a scenario with myself. So, me, I completed school. That was my bachelor's degree in 2020 at the University of Cape Coast. So I read Bachelor of Education in Social Sciences with a combination of geography and economics, and I majored in economics. So I did microeconomics, macroeconomics, advanced economics, and basic statistics without econometrics. And then I started uh, 2021, I started my master's in agricultural economics at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, so I'm now in my final year and I'm doing the econometrics, I'm doing the statistics. So right after my bachelor's degree, I got first class actually, I think 3.8 something, that was my CGPA. And I got, I applied for master's outside. I got into University of California, Berkeley. I got into Western Michigan and Michigan gave me partial funding. But then I was advised that uh, they can't give me the pure economics because I don't have enough uh, statistics and mathematics background, even though I did the econometrics and microeconomics and uh, micro and the advanced, they said it wasn't enough. Which school so was that? The, West, I the Western Michigan? Applying. Yes, Michigan. And okay. uh, for Berkeley, it, I wasn't given the economics, I was given the uh, development engineering rather because of my education background and the geography. They said their course wasn't enough, so I was given development engineering. Mm -hmm. And then, so both of them, uh, the Michigan funding was enough, though, but some situations that I couldn't go. So I had to start the master's year. And now I've been searching for the Canada schools and I've been going through, and most of them, I really want to go and do the pure economics because right now I've done the agriculture economics and I want to do the master's in economics. But most of them are requiring for the GRE. Uh, and unfortunately, some of us, we can't write because it's expensive here. So we can't write. So I'm thinking of right now that I've done the uh, statistics, econometrics for my master's, is it enough for me to apply? Uh, and the undergrads, I did the micro, macro, even the master's to have done it again, plus the economic and advanced uh, economics. Can I still use it to... to apply for the ME pure economics in Canada or uh, I, it's still yeah, not enough. Your background, your background, is, you have some background in agriculture, right? Or you don't? No, please. So I just started agriculture okay. economics. 
no background in agriculture, yeah. But you, you are doing a master's in agricultural economics? Yes, in please. And field. Yes, please. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so I think you should, you should apply. To, so yeah, you can apply. You should apply to some MA in economics and MA in agricultural economics to program. Because okay. uh, even when you're... You see, when you're in agricultural economics, you, you can take courses with people in MA economics. So it's so not advisable uh -huh. to go for the economy. Uh, no, no, I would say it's not advisable. It's just that, just to give give you spread your options, you should apply to the economics, uh, agriculture economics too. Just to give your options. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. But here, for example, if you apply to agriculture economics in wealth, you would take microeconomics to PhD students. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you can apply. Yeah, try Guelph for masters, agriculture economics. And okay. see, Guelph masters, they tend to have money a little bit because they don't as, uh, admit a lot of students. So it seems so that, so right okay. now there are about two Ghanaians in the agriculture economics program in Guelph, in masters. Okay. And then you can try okay. Manitoba too. So I got economics, not many students, not many schools offer it. In Canada, I think it's McGill, UBC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Guelph. Only five schools offer it. Yes. So last yes. year I applied to Saskatchewan and I got in agriculture economics, but without funding. Yeah, for the for masters. Yes, please. Mm, the funding issue that's the that's the issue. But like I said at the beginning, go to some schools that and try to look for Africans or Ghanaians in the department and email them and see and, and ask them about funding and admissions and stuff like that. Okay, please. Okay. Please. Yeah. And also these days, okay. people try, I don't know. Some people, some people try schools in Sweden, Germany, schools in Europe. Some people go to Korea. But some people don't want to go. I know if somebody who got a PhD program in economics in China, that's a good university, but she didn't want to go. So she's coming to Canada to do a master's in a field that is not economics. Because she didn't want to go to China. Thank you so okay. much, Prof. Yes, and Prof, please. please, I think it's past an hour. We want to ask if um, you are still around. Yeah, I have time. time. After. All right, all right, all right. So we'll take the next question from Halima. Halima, if you are here, can you please ask your question? Hello. 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 I really want to thank you for this time. Having this time is not that easy. We couldn't pay for it, but at least we have it now. Okay. I really want to thank you for this. Yes. The thing is, I completed 2012 with a BSc mm -hmm. in market. Yes. But when yes, I was on campus, yes, when I was on campus, I was like, I was okay with my studies until my final year when I lost my payment, which affected me and then dropped my mark to 2.95. That is lower. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried and getting masters outside, but I couldn't. So likely mm -hmm. enough, I had one distance. And I did it. It was it was a, a Bill Gates scholarship that was given then during that time. So I had it. It was a distance, but I was I was given the chance to do either diploma or masters, and I did the diploma. So mm. after that, I still wanted to come physical to do my masters outside either the USA or UK in Canada. Mm. I've tried. Really, I don't. I can't really count the number of times I've tried. But for the past three years. The worst experience was when I wanted my recommendations for my lecturers. In fact, I've applied for schools in U in UK, US, and then Canada. I almost got a lot, but without funding. Mm -hmm. And so the last years, the one that I had, in, I applied to that university. Mm -hmm. Even though, I, but later on, when I wanted to know the risk, no, sorry, even though I I was refused for admission, I wanted mm -hmm. to find out because. That housing in Saskatchewan, that, that was a school I applied to. They don't really mm -hmm. need to seek the consent of the professor, but then 
I went ahead to at least send them an email, even mm-hmm. though it's not a for you to <laughs> the recommendation for professor before you can apply the course. But I still mm-hmm. went ahead to, to, to send them an email, but I was still refused. So later I was I realized it was my recommendation, which wasn't sent because. And Canada and US mostly like the email type. So you have to go and pay in the school and then they will send your email. So I was mm-hmm. disappointed at my school, that is UPSC. I went to find out and the answers I and the response I got from my professors, it was it was so sad. It was so mm-hmm. sad. Mm-hmm. Never I didn't want to move ahead in my education, but it's like I, I'm down. I don't know whether there's still hope. So even this platform, I've joined uh, Biokis and the rest for some time now, but I'll get to the point where I'm not able to cross. So mm-hmm. I don't know whether there is still hope for me. So because of that, I just jump on to apply to colleges in Canada. And luckily enough, I, had, I have two admissions, but one I've dropped and one is supposed to go for this intake, even though I've done all my payments, but still, I'm not, I'm not getting that confidence because it, it's not a program I really wanted to do. I want to pursue my master's and do my PhD, but it's like everything is shattered now. I don't know if I'm be some kind of hope. So hold on, what, 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 what program are you getting But you say it's not a program you want to do? You know, I did a business related course and some of these business related course, if I'm looking out for funding, I'm not getting it. And if I, if I should change the course to, it's not related to me because all these years I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur, like I haven't really worked in the, with the marketing like this. You understand? I've been an entrepreneur okay, so, since. So, so what, yes. what, what program, what is your ideal program? What program do you want to apply to? Yes, there was a government initiative here which I participated in waste management because I channeled into fashion. I wanted to use that platform. I went through the training fine, but I want to use that platform to go for my master's in either waste management, anything related to waste waste management. And if possible, yeah, hospitality or something like that. Okay, all right. So, uh, is it those programs, waste management maybe, but business programs, they sometimes don't have funding. Like if you want to do an MBA, they think that, is, is in a business field, you should come with your own money. But uh, yes. what, did you say your, what did you say your GPA was? You said a two point something? 2.95, please. Okay, so 2.95, okay. so that, 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 that helped you a little bit. So yeah, you can get in, but, but because before, before they, you know, they would, they would pick the, by the time they pick the first class and second class people, upper people, yeah, there will be not be enough space for you. So probably that's one reason you are struggling. But um, so, are you doing a master's right now? No, I'm not doing anything because of childbirth. Also, it's like <laughs> I don't know. Prof, so why, I really is that is that is that waste management? Because you see, for you, your, your experience can help, right? Because you, your experience, so. When you apply, try to write a compelling essay about the experience you have acquired in the field. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so that can help with admission. Maybe funding is a is a tough thing. But I don't want to do a master's in Ghana at all. <laughs> the cost, the essential. Sorry, prof. The cost. No the support. Cost. Oh, you want you want you want your, somebody to pay for your education, right? Exactly. As I said, I lost my parents in my final year in the university. Okay, and I, okay. I understand. I understand. I understand. So, so you, so try, you should try, you have to do a lot of research. You try to Europe, Canada, and look for, let's say, development studies, sustainability studies. There's a, there's a girl who is coming to the University of Lethbridge to come and do a master's in sustainability studies. Okay. Invest of Trent University to do a master's in sustainability studies. And she okay. did economics. She has an MPhil in economics from Legon. There's a guy already there who has a bachelor's in economics and statistics, who's okay. also doing a, a master's in sustainability studies. So you can target programs like that, but because, because the lower makes you a little bit, uh, give, puts you at a, a competitive disadvantage, 
you have to emphasize that you are coming, you are, you are coming with a rich field experience which will enrich the class. Okay. Okay, so, so good luck. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, please, can we keep our questions a bit short so that we can get platform for more questions? Okay, so I'll take the next question from Evans. Evans, if you are here, you can please ask your question. All right, so thank you very much, Hamida. Thank you, Prof, for that insightful presentation. As a prof, uh, when you come to West Ghana, there's a combination of economics, statistics, and mathematics. And these are being run by three different departments. So when you go to economics, we have the economics department itself has courses that have math content. For example, mathematical economics, economic theory one and theory two have mathematical uh, math uh, principles and components. We also have econometrics. Right. So uh, in level 100, when I came to West Ghana, level 100, I took these three combinations. But at a point in time, well, I'm having a, an issue with, with the math uh, because uh, there was a little family issue, so it was affecting my studies. So, so I had to drop maths at level 100. And I continue with statistics and economics. So I finished with second class upper. So I'm asking, uh, do I have any uh, chance of being getting to go, for example, for the MA, knowing that uh, I did a little, uh, the maths, pure mathematics courses were, were not that many, because I don't need maths in level 100. But I had uh, quite a, a number of statistics course up to three, uh, three years. Uh, uh, courses. So that's the first question. Now the first, second question has to do with uh, in terms of uh, experience. You know, uh, so uh, I know that graduate school is more of research. Yes. Yeah, so uh, when you have two students, one first class student, uh, with uh, not that of uh, not enough experience, and then someone another student with second class upper, but had some. Uh, amount of uh, experience. For example, I work with CDD Ghana. CDD is uh, like a research, a policy, a research uh, ah, uh, NGO. Hey. Hey, so, when you have- sorry, I'm sorry. Can, can we all please mute our mics? Thank mm. you. You can continue, Evans. All right, so the second question that I only have these, these two students, someone with second class about some work experience, especially in the research field. And then a first class student with a very high GPA, but the experience level is not that much. Um, when you are admitting students, which of these students do you, uh, are you likely to pick? I know the class is also important, but the experience as well too is uh, something that uh, uh, I learned you also look at for. Mm, okay, so you, you have what? So you have a, you have a bachelor's degree in statistics? Yes, please, from University of Ghana. Okay, okay, okay. And you did maths first year. Okay, so you have, you, have, uh, you, have, you have enough math. Okay, experience doesn't matter, not for economics. So that's what I was telling the other lady about uh, waste management sustainability studies. Those places, experience may matter, because development studies, and by economics, we don't care for, we don't care for experience. So this Nigerian lady I told you about, she, she, she's a senior official. She, she's a little bit way up, up at the Central Bank of Nigeria. But we didn't admit her when she wanted to do, and she has a master's from Warwick. We didn't admit her. What we want is, are you good in math? Do you have good grades? We, we want to know, are you smart? So, the, for the, so I, the research you do at CDD, we don't count it because it's not, the, the technical level of that research is not high for us. Do you get it? The econometrics that you would do there, you're just doing PowerPoint and uh, uh, bar charts and uh, uh, bar, uh, pie charts and all those things and doing scatter plots. So we don't, it's not, it's not rigorous. That's not something that we, yeah, so you have to come with a good grades and a good mathematical training. That's what we focus on. Okay, so, we, so it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, so like this Nigerian professor lecturer I told you, he has a PhD from Nigeria. He has even published in a journal, in a, in a development studies journal. But his technical skills are weak. Like he, he, he's not, so he has to come up to speed. Okay, so, 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 that's, so those are the things we look out for. The, the experience may be borderline. If we are choosing between you and somebody, and you're, you're already matching all dimensions. Then maybe we'll look at the experience, but in general, we're looking at the class and the grades and, and, 
and, and, and good mathematical training. All right, thank you very much, Prof. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. All right, so I think um, we have some few minutes. We are going to take the last two questions. If you have a question, you can just put up your hands. I think there was a question in the chat. I'm going to read it out, Prof. Okay. Um, the question says, I admit the MA or MSc program can be tough, especially due to the differences in our education orientation. What would you say if someone wants to use his undergrad to start, a, to start another BSc in Canada or US? No, 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 no. <laughs> you won't get funding for BSc, but you won't get funding. So you don't if you if you if you want to get US you get funding Canada is out so most of the people people who come here their parents pay their school fees people in Canada their parents pay their school fees some of their parents work at World Bank or UN and the US I think to get some funding when I used to teach at GIS you have to do SAT scholastic aptitude test SAT but funding for undergrad is very low right that is why Joe Biden is trying to forgive like 400 billion in student debt, student loan debt in the US. You have to take a loan, but since you're a foreigner, you don't, you don't qualify for a loan. All right, thank, thank you so uh, much. You don't have to do that. You, you, can just, you can just teach yourself a few things. You don't have to start all over. Other guys, you don't have to do another four-year course. Right? I mean, all of us here, as I'm sort of giving, we came without with, with bachelors from Ghana. We, 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 we struggled, we worked hard and went through. So you can do it. Just you have to work hard. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, um, any more questions? Do we have any more questions? All right, Prof, I have one question here. It says, how do I handle the educational gap of six years? So oh, that is not, been, she's not, been, she, the person has been out of school for six years. Yeah, out of school for six years. Well, then he has to be, the psychological has to be in the back of the school mode. So he has to be somebody, he or she has to be somebody who likes to, to, to keep reading, likes knowledge, want to read. I mean, it depends on the field you are. If you are in a field that's not technical, you're less likely to be rusty, right? So if, you're in, so if you did history, sociology, those things, you, can, you won't be rusty. Or political science because it's reading, 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 right? But if you did something that had, has, has statistics, mathematics, physics, and all those things, the longer you are out of school, the, the more rusty you become because those things is not things that you find in your everyday interaction, right? Yes. But, stuff they have. but somebody, you see, somebody who did mathematics and economics and is very good, and I could tell, and it's very, it was very good in mathematics. Even if they come back 10 years later, because they, they have a, a strong mathematical background, they, they, they can still handle the math and economics. Thank you so much, Prof. Mm -hmm. It's been a great time today having you speak to us about graduate school application processes. We are so grateful we have you here. And um, Prof is going to be around in case we have some questions, we would likely take them later and then maybe look for a time when Prof is free so we can ask him those questions. It was a pleasure to have you all here and then we wish you all the very best in your applications. We will be around in case you have some questions, you could just contact Dr. Farouk for any information. Thank you all, thank you Prof. Thank you, thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank, right, thank, thank you very you. much, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.